Bigfoot, Dogman, Jersey Devil, and others. Are they real? Figments of our imagination? Or the most cleverly disregarded reality of all time? Come into the cabin, let's sit down and find out together. Hey guys, welcome back to the cabin. I'm Robbie. I'm Johnny. I'm Steve. We got Steve back again. <laughs> oh yeah. Steve's becoming a fixture. I like that. If you feed him, he won't leave. <laughs> We well, fed himself. Does that no. count? <laughs> I guess it does. <laughs> That's why I never left. Yeah. Nah. Steve, we enjoy you being here. You, yep. You're adding a lot of. Well, thank you, sir. I enjoy it. It's always good. Yep. All right, guys. We're going to talk about Dogman tonight. Something Ooh. near and dear to my heart. Johnny, you've had a Dogman encounter. A very brief one. A very one. brief one, but you've had a dogman encounter. So that, that's something that I'm envious because I want a dogman encounter. Uh, mine was good. <laughs> Boink. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Your dogman encounter is probably what 99% of the population would want to have as their dogman encounter. You see it at 70. Oh, what was that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but have y'all heard of Werewolf Springs in Tennessee? Vaguely. Steve? No, sir. All right. We did a show on this on DAX Machina. So, and this, you know, Tennessee's not far from where we're sitting right now. I mean, I, I honestly, I think this is probably like two and a half, maybe three hours away. And this story starts back in the Civil War. Uh, during the war between the states, the railroad was constructed through the, <clears throat> through the south ends of Dixon County. In the years immediately following the war, towns began to pop up all along the railroad tracks. White Bluff Station, uh, Smeedsville Station, which is in Dixon, and Burn Station were railroad de uh, depots that were quickly growing into communities, which, you know, when it was where railroad depots started, towns just started popping oh, yeah. up around them, you know, because people on the trains needed things. That's how things like that started. And the railroad was the main source of travel since, <clears throat> since automobiles didn't really exist at that time. Tons of people would ride the trains through Dixon County uh, on their way to, to and from Nashville. In the late 1860s, a circus had just performed in Nashville, and they were heading west to do more shows. Without TV or radio, circus events were a very popular form of entertaining or entertainment during this era. The circus would attract huge crowds with their very unique attractions. They were booked to do shows all over the country. They boarded the train to Nashville and started heading towards Memphis. As they approached Burn Station, there was an accident the train, and the train derailed and tipped over, crashing the railroad cars. It appeared as, as if everyone was all right, but some of the circus animals had been locked in cages and had escaped. Most of the animals were recovered, some were not. Two creatures known as the Wolfman of Borneo escaped and were never found again. The remaining circus performers were gathered together and put on another train. The next day, they moved on to the next city. A few years later, two men were traveling through the town of Burns on their way to Nashville. They decided to make a stop to get some water at a spring. I've been told this was Hall Spring, located in the, near the Hall Cemetery just north of Burns. This area today is located at the southwest corner of Montgomery Bell State Park. When the men resumed their journey back, back to the road, they felt like they were being followed. It appeared as if something or someone in the woods was chasing after them. They began moving faster and faster, realizing something was after them. They ditched their wagon, and both men began running. The two men split into different directions. What was described as a Sasquatch-like monster attacked and killed one man while the second man was able to escape. He ran all the way back to Burns to tell the citizens of the town about, the, about this werewolf and what had happened. News of the werewolf attack quickly spread through Burns and to the neighboring towns of White Bluff and Smeedsville. A crowd formed in Burns, and the men in, the men in town grabbed their guns and other weapons, vowing to hunt down the beast and keep their families safe. The large group, group took off towards Hall Spring with a plan. They took a goat uh, to use as bait, and their plan was to lure the werewolf in and shoot it. It kind of sounds like the plan they had in the new remake of The Wolfman, which didn't go too well for them. Okay. 
The men strategically placed the goat and hid behind trees, ready to shoot. After some time, when it got really dark, the beast approached and the goat and the men or approached the goat and the men fired. But when they lit their lanterns, they saw no goat and no werewolf. The beast had gotten away, and two more people had been killed during the chaos. People became afraid of the area, nicknaming it, nicknaming it Werewolf Springs. Determined to keep Dixon County safe, the citizens came up with a new plan to kill the werewolf. They sought out the best big game hunter in the area and gave him the task to kill the beast. The hunter agreed to go after the beast and was given access to the cabin near the spring. For two days, the hunter went looking for the werewolf and had no luck. On the third night, the hunter finally found the werewolf near the cabin. He shot at the creature through a cabin window, but missed, even though it appeared to hit the beast. The shot provoked the werewolf, who then broke through the cabin door, but the hunter was ready. He shot the beast several times, but the bullets didn't seem to phase the creature, and it kept coming at the man. <clears throat> With little ammo left, including only two bullets in his pistol, it appeared as if the hunter might not make it. Luckily, the sun began coming up, and the werewolf retreated from the cabin back into the woods. The hunter survived it. The hunter, hunter survived, but it was unclear if the shots killed the werewolf or not. But no one wanted to go looking for it anymore. For years, locals would talk about seeing the werewolf, but there were never again any more confirmed sightings. After or about 75 years after the incident during the Great Depression, the state of Tennessee bought a large amount of land to build a state park. It opened in, in the 1940s and became known as Montgomery Bell State Park. Werewolf Springs, as it became known over the years, is now located inside that park. You can access Werewolf Springs by taking an 11-mile overnight hiking trail. Who was brave enough to stay out there? You had me up until 11-mile hiking trail. <laughs> 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 so that is Werewolf Springs in Tennessee. Okay. But you notice something kind of familiar in that that story that we've talked about before? Well, how far is this from LBL? Probably. Uh, Tyler, why don't you look up see how far Werewolf Springs is from Land Between the Lakes? It's probably not too far as the crow flies. But the common factor in that is all of a sudden that became a state park. <laughs> Old Teddy? Yeah. yeah. How many of these places that stuff like this happens become... It's only an hour and a half apart. How many of these places that stuff like this happens in becomes a national or state park? Yeah. So there's, <laughs> and you mentioned the LBL, Johnny. So let you know, let's. Yeah, it's an that's, hour. It's an hour and a half southeast of LBL. Yeah. So we all know that there's been lots of sightings. DA had his own uh, a sighting or two in the LBL. He actually saw. One is him and Nick Valente were driving through the uh, through the LBL, and then he was sitting out there by himself one night, blasting predator calls, and he mm. heard at least two things come running up to him before he could get back in the van and and take off. I hope his wife berated him well for that. I'm sure he got the full name off of that one. Uh, he actually, they, he. His wife, Noah, his son, and his Noah's best friend, who's a DA's adopted son, as he likes to call it, they were coming back from um, the the ranch that they did the uh, the dogman conference at last year. And as they were leaving, they were going driving in between two cornfields, and this is not far from this location either. It's, you know, it's out there in Missouri where DA lives, and they had something cross the road in front of them. And he drives a Nissan Rogue, and he said that this thing's shoulders were well above the hood of his Rogue. But he said it wasn't a deer because whatever it was, it turned and looked at him. And he said the eye shine, or the green eye shine on it was so bright that it 
he said it almost is like it was illuminated from within. It not like it was just the light shining off of it. Wow. Um, he said he slowed down to uh, like he was going to get out, and his wife gave him the full three names. You are not getting out of this car. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, dogman sightings are starting to become a lot more prevalent here. You got the two, uh, you got the the FedEx driver, and that is a weird story. That is really weird. Uh, Steve, you know anything about that one? Okay. <clears throat> if I was to tell you that the report said unknown canine, what would that say to you? Oh, something, something definitely different, I guess. I mean, how many, uh, this is the 2000s in the United States of America, how many unknown canines are there? Uh, none. Exactly. But yet they have not, they, the law enforcement in that town shot and killed both dogs that they claimed killed it, but yet they have not released anything to show uh, that those dogs had actually fed on or killed that driver. Oh, I hadn't heard this. Yeah. This was just a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah. We actually did a small show on it. <coughs> but um, no, nothing has ever been... Why do you leave a case open? So it cannot be requested yeah, by FOIA. That's very true. So if you run in and you all of a sudden say, oh, yep, uh... We shot the dogs, but the case is open. Exactly. There's a reason that case is left open. And then, what was the other one? It was the hunter. Remember that one? Not uh, maybe a week or two after that. Now, Johnny, you're a hunter. Mm -hmm. If you ever shot a deer in the woods, set your rifle down, and then went to track said deer. <laughs> <laughs> I've been gored by deer. <laughs> no. But not because you set your rifle down and went to no. track it, right? So I couldn't get to it quick enough. It was on my back. Yeah. <laughs> so the story with this is supposedly he shot the deer because they found a lot of blood. They don't say whether the blood was tested to find out if it was from the deer or not or from him. They found his rifle, leaned up next to a tree, and then they... They found him, and they wouldn't. They haven't released anything on condition or anything. They said he froze to death, but the temperature was nowhere near freezing the night that he was out. A lot of things are uh, handed off to hypothermia. Mm -hmm. So now, a lot of people could say, "Okay, well, this could still be a gugway or a." Genosqua or something like that, but it's awful close to these areas that are, have werewolf dogman sightings. LBL, Werewolf Springs. I mean, it's named Werewolf Springs for crying out loud. Bearcat Mountain. Yeah, that's another good one. Yeah. So I mean, I, you know, like I said, you've had your dogman sighting. Granted, it was at seventy miles an hour driving down the road. But I really want to, I really want to have, I've had my Bigfoot encounters. I want to have a Dogman encounter. A lot of people look at me like I'm crazy, like Steve's looking at me right now. <laughs> well, if I'm going to have another one that's less than 70 mile an hour, there's going to be, a, I'm going to bring my girlfriend with me. Yeah, yeah. I think Steve said it before we started. He said, I don't want to get it. <laughs> mm -mm. I've seen what dogs do to you. <laughs> Especially canine dogs or police dogs was capable of doing. Yeah. Imagine that with a 800-pound dog man. I've seen, what, I've seen what a 70-pound Malwar could do. I can't imagine something beyond that. That's yeah. just... So what do you think, Johnny? You think dog, I mean, I know you You say that's what you saw, but you still kind of like, well, uh, that you, you on the... Dogman believer side. Oh yeah. What do you think, Steve? You think it could be 
real creature? Or do you think it's a misidentification of a Bigfoot? No. I listened to an interview once, and it was by uh, a wild a wildlife biologist from Michigan. And he talked about how he had an experience while he was doing research in the woods and how it kind of crept up on him and he thought it was a wolf until it stood up on two feet. And I mean, he was, it was a real good interview. I mean, I don't know his identity, but that seemed to be pretty, pretty well, trustworthy and, and what he was talking about. You know, we talked about off the air, we were talking about Hellbent Holler. You know, they, they do yeah. a lot of research in yeah, LBL mm. and some really good good videos on that that channel if y'all want to check them out um they do a lot of stuff in the lbl and they firmly believe in it da's had like i said a couple encounters in the lbl there's a school of thought that it could be like a holdover from the dire wolf and it's just um a morphological thing that it's able to stand up on two legs but it that it, it might not be able to consistently stay on two legs, but that it's just like a, you know, it's not as ungainly as a bear on two legs, but could still stand up and, and move, you know, for for a little bit on two legs. Or it could just be that that's the way it is. And, you know, you got the people out there who say that the government has made these things. But when you think about it, you saw, you heard the year that this, I mean, this is the 1800s, and it goes back to the 1700s when people were citing these things. I mean, there's all kind. Of, think about the Rougarou. We did a show on that. I mean, that you know that goes back to the 1700s when the yeah. French uh, trappers that became Cajuns. You know, that's where the Rougarou come from, because <laughs> that was just you know, Luke Garou is French for werewolf, and you know, and French Cajuns just. You know, they added some stuff to it, and that's now the Rougarou. But mm. well, I look forward to going out and playing. Yeah, I think we're gonna need to start trying to plan some excursions on this channel. That's I mean, what we need some field time. Well, I mean, we looked at that. how far was it from here to Rural Springs? Couple, couple hours. Yeah. And then LBL is another hour and a half from it. And Mammoth Spring, Mammoth Cave is only an hour and a half northeast of. They're all in a neat little triangle. You know that. <laughs> That's a coincidence. And triangles again. What is it with triangles and all this kind of stuff? I don't know, but stuff? it's almost a perfect triangle. Because if, if we had a good tech guy, he'd already have it pulled up. He'd be showing us. <laughs> Our tech guy's doing tech stuff right He's now. He's looking at kittens. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a there's a what is it, what's the triangle in Alaska called Steve? It's the Golden uh, Triangle. I can't remember. I but there, about. Alaska's got a triangle. Um, obviously the most famous Bermuda Triangle. This new one, which I think I've heard Brandy talk or talk and call that area a triangle that we were just talking about. So I was just looking at it on the map a second ago, and it this triangle all day long. But you know we could, we could plan about a week, and we could hit all those spots in a week. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. If everybody could work their schedules out and get it, that'd be a, that'd be a pretty nice little week. Yeah. So the dog man encounters are any of them positive? As in, it seems like that's more of a one way trip. Yeah, more aggressive type thing than maybe a Sasquatch. I don't think any dog man encounters have been like, oh, they wanted you to come up and scratch them on the Yeah, ears. that's what I'm saying. Maybe it, yeah, it, more. Yeah, it's, it's always been... Obviously, the LBL, we've got, you know, several fatal encounters there. we got the, the FedEx driver and the hunter in Missouri... Um, this one that we just read in Werewolf Springs, Tennessee. Um, but he's not throwing rocks or knocking on trees. No, nah, there's or, there's none of that. It's, it's more of a prowling and growling. Yeah, people who see stuff. him, it's more of a an aggressive get away from me or or else. Well, and, and you know, I've talked about, or we've talked about this, and I've said this before. 
it seems like you know with bigfoot it's a, it's a toss up 50 50 yeah. you might you might get some aggressive encounters you get an encounter where somebody's like oh my god i'm you know we were lucky to get out of there and then some of them are like oh man it was just so peaceful and you know we just knew they were there but 99.9 percent of the time with a dog man it was like they describe evil yeah it's more uh, aggressive. demonic uh just fear which i mean you see a 800 or 1,000 pound wolf creature standing up on two legs looking at you. I mean, cute and cuddly is just not the two adjectives that I would choose to describe that. No. I mean, I don't think cute and cuddly describes Bigfoot either, personally. I mean, but still, there's been a lot more positive interactions with Bigfoot than there have with Dogman. You know, I and I said that most people look at me like I'm like I got a third eye in the middle of my head when I say I want to have a dogman encounter, but I just I want to see if it's out there. I mean, you know, that's, that's the name Why of not? our show. That's it. What's really out there? What's really out there? And I just I think like we we talked about that veil being lifted and thinning and. When things happen, you know, you you hear that ter- term perfect storm a lot about things, but with the way the Black Plague of the 20th century <laughs> that came out and people were out of the woods for, what, two and a half, three oh, yeah. years, and it doesn't take nature long to reclaim anything. I mean, we have all rode by houses that... You know, people been out of them for a couple of months, and it looks like they've been abandoned for yeah. five years. So I mean, it doesn't take nature long. To, so if you're not it, number one, if you got eighty-seven million acres worth of, and that's just the national p- parks, mm-hmm. eighty-seven million, eighty-seven, eighty-eight million that's right. acres. That's a lot, of, but that don't even count state parks. So if you're out of those places for three years, nobody can go out, nobody can do anything, it's not going to take these things long to start moving in mm-hmm. or moving back. And I think that um, hunters usually go into the woods at a certain location, and then you have hikers who hike on trails, but going off into the deep wilderness, I mean, that's a small percentage of the population who actually want to go off grid, you know, by GPS or with no cell service. And you have to be prepared to do that. The average person who hunts is, you know, within proximity of, you know, their vehicle, and they set up things to hunt in a certain area. Hikers usually stay on that trail. Yeah, but that's a small part of those forests. Yeah, but and you think about though, if all of a sudden those people are no longer there, even the ones that, you know, were going deep, like you said, which yeah. is a small population, and then the hunters, which is maybe a bigger population than that, but still small comparatively, are not there. And then the bigger population, which is just the recreational people, are not there. You know, it's huge. It doesn't <laughs> take yes. it doesn't take long for things to say, oh, yeah. humans are not here. We can do what we want. And all of a sudden, you know, people are back there. You Go gotta ahead. think about a breeding population, what can happen in three years. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. New clans or whatever you want to call them, family groups. Yeah. Well, and nobody knows how what the gestation period is or how, you know. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, three years, a lot can happen. Yep. You know, and then if you got a population explosion within three years, that's going to force them into different places. Well, if there's nobody there and they get these, and all of a sudden people are back, then, you know, that's where and you... Now we've been doing a construction boom for about the last... 18 months to two yeah, years. That's true. Mm-hmm. Back to encroaching. <laughs> yeah. Perfect storm. Well, yeah. Like I said, and think about a lot of the encounters back years and years, and I'm talking like back in the, you know, maybe the, in the Civil War times and things like that when people were really starting to push in and build and things like that. That's when a lot of these encounters happened. Then all of a sudden, it kind of slows down. Because we pushed him back. Where was Bigfoot when Sherman came down? I don't know. He should have been around. Maybe he was Southern people would get that. Yeah. 
Maybe he wouldn't took Atlanta if Bigfoot had put his <laughs> foot down. <laughs> That's a big foot to put down. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's there's old Green Eyes. He was supposedly out there on the battlefield in, uh, where was it, in Georgia? Which battlefield? Jessica's going to kick my tail for not remembering this. Chickamauga. Yep. Okay. Well, we need to get in the woods. Yep. So, Johnny, you think it's real? Steve, yeah, you think, think it's yeah. really possible to be real? But he doesn't want to pet its belly like I do. No. 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 no Steve, Steve wants to have your kind of uh, <laughs> 70 miles. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> I think some of the things in uh, newspapers and you know history like that starts laying groundwork for the truth. I mean, not everybody is being dishonest. Yeah. And I think you know Sasquatch history and other cryptic history is is well published in old newspapers and articles. It's not all those people are being dishonest. What? And when? What year did the Smithsonian become a thing? I'm not sure. Let's see. Because their name's always attached with. Yeah. Relics leaving. I think Tyler's looking that up now. But here, think about this. Think about all the sightings that people have of the Mothman. Think about that description mm -hmm. that they've given. Okay? What's some of the common things that they say? And the Smithsonian was around 1846. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you hear dark figure. Wings, red eyes, right? Yeah. What else does that sound like? Mothra? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Sounds like Bigfoot or Sasquatch, maybe. No, I mean, think red eyes, wings, okay, dark wings. figure. Okay. And maybe not wings, just yeah. big just, arms and with great maybe. jumping ability. But follow me on this. What other mythical creature, and I didn't use, I'm not using the word cryptid, but what other mythical creature could be described that way. We're talking about dogmen slash werewolves. Think about vampires. Oh, yeah, that's true. That uh, so. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that, you know, Count Dracula's out there running around. But all these Mothman sightings, pretty much it's a creature that flies, it has red eyes, People feel mesmerized when they look into the to its eyes. Think about all those uh, vampire things. So, what if these vampire legends that we have that describe, describe vampires were actually something like a Mothman? That's very possible. So, I mean, because we say it all the time, these things come from somewhere. The Inca stones, they didn't go around looking on Google to see what a stegosaurus looked like to paint it on this rock 4,000 years old. Exactly, yeah. Same thing with, with vampires, werewolves, giants. I mean, we've talked about uh, on DAX Machina, trolls, that could very well be what people were, over there were calling or describing for, as a Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. I mean, Grendel, if you think about that Wood legend. woes and all that. Yeah, but think about the think about the story of Beowulf and Grendel. Mm -hmm. Grendel is almost described as like a Genosqua. So, it, all this stuff is intertwined and interlaced. So maybe all these vampire sightings, maybe that was what what, what you know people were seeing of a Mothman. Mm -hmm. You know all these werewolf stories. Uh, maybe that's a real dog man out there, you know. Definitely some, there's definitely a grain of truth with every bit of it. Yeah, the I'm just wondering, you know, the story of Werewolf Springs, the hunter, the only thing that saved him was it started to be daylight. Now, is that because it had to run back and turn into a human? Who knows? Or maybe it's just, you know, it's a nocturnal animal. I mean, <laughs> that's... That's what Johnny calls a rabbit hole. Love it. So, just food for thought. 
Yeah. I'll bring some hot sauce. I'm going to taste bad for one. <laughs> now, Frank's put that stuff on everything. Oh, God. No, I use good hot sauce. I'll light him up with some Carolina Reaper. <laughs> He'll regret that bite. <laughs> he better eat some ice cream after he gets done with you, right? Yeah. Steve, you got anything else? No, sir. I was just looking up a little information, trying to learn. <laughs> I'm exhausted. It's a good story. It's good, though. I look forward to it. Yep. So, Norm, if you're out there listening, be ready. We're going to plan some trips. So. Hopefully we don't need Norm's professional services. I hope not. <laughs> that could be bad. So. All right. Well, folks, if you got anything you want us to do a show on, got any stories or anything like that, we've got several ways to get in touch with us. You can get in touch with us on our Facebook page, What's Really Out There. You can get in touch with us on our YouTube channel, which is What's Really Out There. Uh, all our videos are on YouTube. I think Norm or Tombstone One will not usually post the videos on our YouTube or on our Facebook page as well. Uh, we're on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Spotify, on all the most all the major platforms. Um, our website, or excuse me, our email address is what's really out there two zero two two at gmail dot com. Any story you got, any uh, anything you want us to do a do a show on. Send us an email. Send us a message on Facebook or YouTube. Let us know. Uh, get on that YouTube page and subscribe, like, share, help us out, help us grow. I think we're, Tyler, got maybe like 200 subscribers on YouTube now, something like that. Wow. I think we're almost at 300 on the Facebook page. Um, so we're growing. You know, that's the, that's the whole point of this. We're wanting to, to grow, so all the other all out there, hit those like and sub share and subscribe buttons for us on everything. <laughs> share us and give us a give us a holler. Let us know if there's anything you want us to look into. Johnny, you got anything else? I'm out. Steve? I'm done. All right. Well, that's it for this time. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Have a good one. See you soon. <laughs>